Well, wait a minute. <laughs> the keys to running a successful restaurant. Great food, great ambiance, great staff. But today, people judge your restaurant before they ever walk in the door. They won't give you a chance unless you have amazing online reviews. I'm Andrew Gruel, and I run Slapfish Restaurant with my best friend and chef, Anthony Dispensa. Andrew has a brilliant mind for business. And Anthony can whip any kitchen into shape. With over 20 plus locations in development worldwide, Anthony and I utilize online reviews to create the perfect experience. One bad review can sink your business by up to 20%. Which could mean the difference between staying open and shutting your doors down forever. For restaurant owners across the country, it's really difficult to distinguish between the truth and what's just online trash talk. Tonight, for the first time, the owners of Bastard's Restaurant come face to face with their harshest online critics. You being in the Marine Corps know you gotta speak up when you have a problem. And now, then you being in the Marines should hold yourself to a much higher standard. Will these former soldiers be willing to turn their restaurant from a military hangout to a civilian clubhouse? My suggestion is change the name. You're out of your mind, dude. It's, it's not gonna happen. so many people away. No. Or will Nick and Calvin's shrine to Semper Fi have to close its doors forever? It's more than a bar. That's a general yeah, public. Really. But yeah. that's your customer yeah. give them. What are you doing, man? Are you serious? If they want to talk to us, they will talk to us. Downey, California is a city near Los Angeles that's seen huge growth in the last few years. And it was named one of the best places to run a business. So a casual sports bar should be raking it in. But with a name like Bastards and sloppy bar food to boot, reviewers are slamming them online. An average of all the online review sites is leaving them with only two out of five forks. The crispy spicy chicken sandwich was a little greasy and ended up hurting my teeth. It was so crunchy. The bastard fries reminded me of when you were a kid and you'd mix every flavor that you ever loved to make a drink. We called that a suicide. That's what these fries were. I got the lock and loaded nachos, and it looked like it was locked and loaded and came out of somebody. And then the taste, like, it came right out the, the, the can. And the name of the restaurant has some customers questioning going in at all. It's not very inviting for families. I don't know if I want my kids to say, hey, I went to Bastards last night at school. And the military-themed decor has customers wondering if they're having a meal or in the middle of warfare. They had this camouflage netting that looked like it was straight out of MASH. I just got out the Navy. I don't want to be reminded I was in the service again by going into that. I was waiting for somebody to jump out and say, got you, something with a gun. Ooh-ah. And they say the owners would rather hang with their buddies than help the customers. It took us forever to get in our order. We were the only ones sitting down, and right next to us, we had the owners just clueless as to what was going on. The restaurant's leaving customers so shell-shocked that they're taking their experience online. So Iraq War Vets, Nick and Calvin, have reached out to us to see if we can help them straighten out these bad reviews. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Anthony. I need some help ASAP. I opened up Bastards two and a half years ago with Calvin. I'm the general manager and partner at Bastards. I feel like online reviewers are a joke. They're basically ass Online reviewers have been trashing us, talking online, pulling a lot of things out of their ass. Like, our food is frozen, and we haven't put a lot of thought to the decor. They're just hiding behind their computer screen and typing away. Calvin is my Marine Corps brother. He's my right hand man. Nick and I met 10 years ago in School of Infantry. We served together, bled together in Iraq. And so we decided to name it Bastards after our battalion in the Marine Corps, nicknamed Magnificent Bastards. Lieutenant Colonel Bull Fisher called him that one day back in Vietnam. And uh, it's been a nickname ever since. It's, it's a term of endearment. Everyone is welcome to come into Bastards. You get a lot of veterans from all kinds of branches that come and hang out. Not only have I invested hundreds of thousands of dollars into the business, but I haven't took a paycheck in two and a half years, and I currently live at home, uh, live on my dad's couch. I have about two to three months left in my GI Bill. I'm almost done with all the money I got, and if things don't change in three to six months, we're probably gonna have to close down shop. Nick and I have given all we've got. We've tried everything, but we really need help. I need this restaurant to work. It's, it's home. It literally is home. So Andrew and I are here for four days to see if we can turn these online reviewers around. Hey, how's hey, it going? Andrew. Nick. Anthony. 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 Nick. 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 Hey, guys. So, look, we saw the plea that you uploaded online. Yep. And the online reviewers are beating you up a little bit. God, they're killing us. Yeah. yeah? You work so hard, give it all you got, then no matter what it is, they always find something wrong to pick at, you know? It's like they're 
chopping away at our livelihood. Yeah, okay, guys. So we came in and we dined here. And right when we walked up, we were put off by the name. We walked in, and I actually didn't feel welcome. I felt as if we were walking into a military clubhouse. And look, the reviewers, they're not too far off. So bastards, huh? You wouldn't want to bring your kids here, that's for sure. I'll tell you what, we talk about not understanding the concept sometimes, right, when you walk in. I know we're in a military shack right now. <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't be in here. I don't feel like I should be in here either. You gotta have a card to come in here or something, right? Can I get you two started with something? Let's go with uh, an order of the lock and load nachos, an order of the fries, chicken tenders, the beef sliders, a spicy chicken sandwich, and a grilled cheese melt. Okay. Are the weapons loaded? Who knows, man? Here we go, guys, bastard fries. I don't know if we ordered enough. I don't think so. We do so. this every single place we go. All right, let's dig in. Lock and load nachos? That's quite interesting, huh? These remind me of every single thing that's in my refrigerator right now on top of nachos. I've got cold cheese that hasn't been melted, raw onions. Nothing here is fresh. Everything is canned. Nothing special about it. If at least if you're going to do bar food, at least do bar food right. The chicken tenders that look like they've been straight out of the freezer, they didn't do anything to make these special. Beef sliders. Even has some hair on it. That's lovely. It's completely dry, nasty meat. That's well, horrible. Yeah, the spicy chicken sandwich. I'm going to let you jump into that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, get in, in your hands. Hey, it's in, hey, it's, it's in when in Rome. Whoa, Whoa. Oh, hey, oh. look at that. That It's soaked with, I mean, it's, that's nasty. That's a Thousand Island towel. I mean, I'm telling you, everything here is horrible. It's all just too much, too much sauce, too many ingredients. It needs to be simple and focused. Wash this all down. I'll tell you what. Nine out of 10 times, the guys who have a good freaking experience here are not gonna go right online and say that they had a great time. It's gonna be that guy yeah. who had a bad experience. Yeah. And Honestly, I'm surprised that Andrew and Anthony are agreeing with everything the online reviewers have to say, and it's pissing me off. If they don't appreciate this place for what it's worth, honestly, sometimes we don't you even have to watch come it. Back. Are you rolling the dough? You guys you have know, money problems? You know, you got your good times, you got your bad times. But overall, you know, we try to take care of the guys who come in here every day. The question I have for you is, do you want our help? We live and die by the online word, OK? All right. We've got over 20 restaurants in development worldwide. And we did that by listening to the online reviewers. Look, at the end of the day, what these reviewers are saying is right. So we're going to close this restaurant down right now so you can meet these online reviewers. Roger that. We're going to take care of everybody's bill in here, OK? <laughs> The only thing is, unfortunately, you guys got to get out of here. Good night, guys. That's it. I come from a long line of military family members. I give bastards one and a half forks because I want to hold you guys to a higher standard because I expect better from you guys. I'm Linda, and I'm a mom. And when I get to go out, that's one less meal I have to cook. Woohoo! I'm a Navy vet, and I'm way too lazy to cook. I just love to go out and eat all the time. They should put more pride and effort into their food, because it sucks. These online reviewers, they think they're going to come over here to my restaurant and tell me how to do things or how I'm messing up things. Honestly, they don't know what the f coming their way. All right, everybody, welcome back. We've seen your reviews. Calvin and Nick have seen your reviews. The goal tonight is to open up a conversation and allow you to say what you said online to the owners. Let's kick it off with the food. Who here had the chicken tenders? Why don't you stand up and read your review? Gentlemen, let me just thank you for your service. No problem. So I ordered the chicken tenders. They were undercooked. We split one open, and it was still raw on the inside. That's a danger. If I was to eat that, food poisoning. I don't come into a place to order chicken tenders because I'm expecting magic or anything phenomenal. I come in to order them because they're consistent. Not a lot of people can screw them up, but you guys did. I think that that was total bull <laughs> You can't mess up chicken. Yeah, but hold on. First off, you got customers here. Mm -hmm. He's complaining. He's telling you an issue, and you're kind of laughing about it. All right. We heard about the chicken tenders. Anything else? Stand up. Tell me what you had. I ordered the fries, and they were way salty. I had to send them back to the kitchen. They were so salty, I couldn't eat them. I think it's a matter of quality control. You just got to pay attention, whoever's back there. God. <laughs> Who here tried the beef sliders? Hi, my name is Daniel, and I'm a former Marine, and I gave this place one fork. Sliders were burnt, no fries, dry meat. You guys were sitting two tables away from us doing paperwork. Instead of going online, when I'm like four seats away from you, why don't you just come talk to me? Why not tell us? So you were right next to me. I you couldn't, you couldn't be burned to look over to <laughs> see burnt sliders? Words. You, as everyone else who's been in the Marine Corps, know that you got to speak up when you have a problem. Yeah, and now, then you being in the Marines also know that you should hold yourself to a much higher standard. Why can't you just talk to me in person when I'm right next to you, it brother? It seems like you're using when you're and you understand what we've been through from 
Who cares? It seems, it seems like you're using this as a crutch. All what is I want to say, guys, is you guys aren't listening. You're sitting there diminishing everything everyone has to say before you even hear what his point is. You're the one writing the review. If you I'm have not a writing the review. But here's the uh, you know what? Can I call it off? I, just, like, let's just calm down for a second. Just sit down for a second. Bro, if you would have just like pulled one of us to the side, the server to the side, be like, hey, can I talk to one of the owners? We've seen this before. The owners want the luxury of customers bringing them complaints in oh, person, oh, but I that's just know. not how this business works. Yeah, nobody operates that way anymore. Let's say you actually went out to a restaurant, you paid for an item, how would you react if you got something? I react exactly how he reacted, but I wouldn't write about it. Yeah. Affecting their livelihood. But business yeah. isn't done that way anymore. No, you know what, do me the favor and just tell me first. We pay with the money that we could use towards our rent to come out to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. That's our hard earned money that we're spending to treat ourselves. My anxiety's kicking right now, bro. Calvin is getting pretty emotional about this. We need to change directions and hopefully calm the room. Okay, how about the ambiance? When I first walked into Bastards, I almost walked out. I was afraid that those who have PTSD might have a flashback and might go crazy in the joint. The bazookas lying around for just any person to pick up just isn't appropriate for a restaurant. This place is not so family friendly as you may want it to be. The theme here is cool, yeah, except I got the feeling of dark and gloominess. I think the families in this neighborhood, the name Bastards oh, might be offensive, yeah. yeah. But would I bring my kids to a place called Bastards? Just tell them so, it's the guys that fought for your freedom is the reason why you get to be here. I know, and get a but I'm thinking maybe we can get creative <laughs> with it and come up with a different name. She's making a valid point. Don't you need families to support the business? That was our military unit. There's a there's a little thing up here on the wall. Bastards, you know, it's a nickname for the 2nd Battalion, 4th Marines, the Magnificent Bastards. It's not your place where you just go and you enjoy your burger and you enjoy your beer. It's a place where you enjoy your burger and your beer. You talk about a couple war stories. Do you feel offended by that word? It means more than just the word. But do you want to you know, save it, your it, business? And, and, it, and no, it's not about saving the business. It's making sure that America understands that there is a group of gentlemen named the Bastards. I know. And if you can't, That's all because I then you just don't. Guys, she's trying to make a point. You don't understand the, the Tears I've cried, the, the god blood my brother's sweat. So I can call him a name. It's more than a name, and I turn this understand. place into a bar and forget the it's restaurant there. I'm not telling you, like, it's gotta be a boys' club. Make, it a boys club. Make it my a boys' club. Make it a boys' club. Comes here. It's okay. More than I, a I have to tell my niece why. So look, look, you've it's got an online bar. reviewer who's resigning the point right now. You guys have to listen to your customers. Yeah. I mean, that's your general public right there. But it's more than a bar. That's the general yeah. public. But yeah. that's, yeah. Your, you think that's your customer base. Oh, listen to your customers, dude. Those are the people that are paying your bills. Open up a private club. You want to Oh, okay, really? Do you? Dude, what are you doing, man? Are you serious? Listen to your customers, dude. That's why you're failing. That's why you're failing. You're failing. Stop, dude. Guys, guys, guys. Listen to touch me. If they want to talk to us, they will Talk to us. I'm not going to sit there like a idiot. No, dude, honestly, if you guys don't like it, then leave. I am not going to look like a dumbass because these guys. Hey, 22 vets a day commit suicide. This is what this place is for. So they could come and talk to somebody. Nick, take him outside. We have the greatest respect for these guys and their service, but they're creating a clubhouse vibe that makes the general public feel completely unwelcome. Yeah, if they don't start listening to their critics, bastards might just go down. And if they fail, they'll have no place for the civilians or veterans. The thing is, we get worked up about this because we go into restaurants day in and day out, and we really try and moderate the conversation between online reviewers and restaurant owners. Your reviews are productive, and that's what we want to focus on here, okay? We need to call it a night and let these people go home. Yeah, this situation has become completely out of control, and Nick and Calvin are beyond reasoning. All right, guys, if we can get Nick and Calvin to address your issues, who would be willing to come back in a few days and give this place another chance? Raise your hands, if you would. OK, so not everyone. That's OK. Thank you so much for coming in. We look forward to seeing you in a couple nights, OK? Have a good night. Thanks. This was my final visit to Bastards. It was just disappointing. I don't think this business is going to succeed. They're so hot-headed, these two. And I've been this angry in a while. Nick, how you doing? Oh, hey, what's up, guys? Last night got way out of hand, but we called Nick and Calvin this morning, and they agreed to let us come back. Yeah, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit nervous about going back into this place. I wonder how Calvin's feeling. 
You had a rough one yesterday, you know? Yeah, you did. I know I went out and I reached out, you know, for their help, and I gave them a plea, but I've never had anyone talk down to me the way that they did. There might be a slight chance that Calvin lays a couple hands on Andrew. And uh, maybe I'll have to take over Anthony, but I don't think that would be too hard. What made you want to leave last night? The whole thing with the name, it just, it's its like a soft spot. And like, if I didn't get out of there, I would have i would have exploded. The name's just what, what this place is all about. Yeah. You know, without those guys, we gave all the ultimate sacrifice, and we wouldn't be here. It just means a lot more to us than just the restaurant, you know, it's, it's, it's home. This place is really like a safe haven. 22 vets, combat vets a day commit suicide. As a matter of fact, right before Bastards, I was leaning more towards, um, more towards it than anything. Uh, but opening up Bastards, it was like a sense of belonging. And to give that out to other vets, it's why I do it. We've opened doors to a bigger community. And if a small handful of people think our name's offensive, then But if you guys don't make some changes here, the vets aren't going to have a place to go anymore. I agree. Good point. We can't give up on this place. You know, we've been here for almost two and a half years, three years now. Um, we're getting all we got. So if you guys want to keep this place open, we have a couple suggestions. Good to go. Excellent. Nick and Calvin need to focus their passion on what they're serving in the kitchen, not just making a safe haven for vets. First, we'll suggest elevating this dull sports bar menu to an American craft menu with a military canteen spin. Second, we'll try and convince Nick and Calvin to lose the clubhouse feel in favor of a more cohesive, relaxing, civilian-friendly atmosphere. And third, because it seems that Nick and Calvin are more concerned with hanging with the guys, we want to propose some clear responsibilities between these two bosses. So tell me about Calvin. Yeah, he went to Cordon Bleu, guy's degree in uh, culinary arts. Whoa, what? Calvin's a trained chef, and he's not working in the freaking kitchen? Right. These two are so concerned about creating the supportive atmosphere for their fellow vets that they've forgotten they're also running a restaurant. With all the, the problems that we heard about the food and his experience, can you step it up? run in the front of the house, and Calvin can be the main guy in the back of the house. I, the only thing I don't like, uh, he's oh, doing the scheduling, payroll. he's doing the payroll and all that. So to take care of the kitchen, that's just another headache. But don't you agree that, especially coming from the military, there should be a clear head decision maker? I mean, we're not going to change nothing just because just customers don't like it, you know? I think Nick just wants his buddy out front with him and is making excuses for it. But he's got to realize they could be sitting on a gold mine with a trained chef. We've got to get Calvin in the kitchen. You went to culinary school, yeah, correct? basically, it was like my therapy especially after the whole combat thing. But with doing the admin work and the payroll, I basically gave the kitchen to the kitchen manager. You should be using that degree to your advantage. Because right now, you're definitely not executing good food. So I ordered the chicken tenders. They were undercooked. We split one open, and it was still raw on the inside. If I was to eat that, food poisoning. Not a lot of people can screw them up, but you guys did. Calvin hasn't been in the kitchen for two years, but he needs to get his ass back in here. It's time to stop throwing together sloppy nachos and start creating some fresh, buzzworthy food. You need signature dishes. Yeah. Do you like hot dogs? Uh, Comfort food, right? Yeah. Let's come up with a hot dog. All right. The best tasting dogs are poached in a court bouillon or dirty water. We're using a mixture of onions, fresh thyme, garlic, and beer. This dog is going to be awesome. It's going to soak up all that great flavor. So let's talk about what you'd like to put on this hot dog to build a signature dish for yourself. I got pickles. I got some relish. I got some ketchup. Hmm. <laughs> you look confused. I want you to come up with your own dish here. I'm here to help you. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm, I'm not sure if I have the uh, creativity I had two years ago. But I mean, I, I got to find it. Do you think maybe you've lost your passion for cooking? I want to see it, because I'm not getting it from you. Huh? Yeah. What? But what? Like, what do you want to uh, do? Let's see, we could do wrapped in bacon. Oh, perfect. What, what, what else, though? Uh, relish, maybe. Uh... OK, so now we have the relish, the bacon. I'll try tomatoes. Maybe uh, shaved cheese. Perfect. It'll give it a, like a kick. See, right there, you're thinking. That's awesome. You're starting to think about food. Hey there, Mr. Gruel. How, How you, you doing? doing? Good, good. So, so what's uh, going on? We're basically trying to reignite this guy in the kitchen. And this is what he came up with. You came up with it yourself? Yeah, this is him. I don't believe yeah. that. Oh, wow. Chef Calvin, my man. You make one damn good dog. <laughs> Something so simple like that, it really sparked something in me to just really want to do this, want to get back in the kitchen. But what's going to happen with payroll? What's going to happen with inventory? Let me ask you a question. Are you willing to be in the front of the house because this man belongs in the kitchen? 
I'm having a lot of doubts right now. I don't know if I actually need a change. Calvin has had my back since day one in the Marine Corps. And honestly, he's the guy I want right next to me. Coming up next. My suggestion is change the name. You're out of your mind, dude. That's not going to happen. Because you know, I'm just thinking it's, it's not driving so many people away. No. Can you see it from the customer's perspective? I know the name of the restaurant is a hot button issue for Nick, but the fact is they're losing business because of it. The name Bastards oh, might be offensive, yeah. yeah. Maybe we can get creative <laughs> with it and come up with a different name. I can see maybe they find it's a little bit offensive, you know, but, um, but it's not. Do you want their business? I would like their business, you know? We're friendly people here. You're friendly it's people, but the name Bastards doesn't say friendly. To it me. doesn't say friendly, it says American veteran. The people don't know that. I mean, my suggestion is change the name. You're out of your mind, dude. You're so, out of your mind. That's not going to happen. Because you know, I'm just thinking that with the name, it's, it's not driving happen. so many people away. No. No, we won't change the name. Andrew's pissing me off. I'm ready to freaking tell these guys apart and tell them to get the out of here. But when you change the name, you change our identity. There's a lot of guys who give it all they had. Yeah. They made the ultimate sacrifice, dude. You take this freaking name off, you're just kind of forgetting about them. Can you follow me inside the restaurant real yeah. quick? Yeah. And you know why we can't change the name? Check it out. See all these names here, brother? Yep. All these names here are brothers here. All these guys we fought alongside in Iraq, and a lot of these guys here are not here today. They're gone, but not forgotten. Nick's not going to budge on the name, and I totally understand why. These guys aren't bastards. They're heroes. And we just need to make sure the public understands that. I think we need to communicate to the guests in a different manner, right from the outside, right from the onset, what Bastards is all about. Okay. This is downtown Downey. I mean, this is a Main Street area. You are visible to thousands of people every single day. We need people to come up right here and know that this isn't just a sports bar. Okay. Because it's not. It's not. If we're going to make this name work, these guys need to change public opinion big time. This is going to be group chili here, so why don't you guys get going? We'll start roasting these group peppers. Group chili. So we're going to reach out to the community with a big overture. Throw yeah. those right on the grill. What better way to spread the real story behind Bastards and let people know about the grand reopening than with delicious chili? We'll take a big pot down to City Hall and set up a table and get the word out. I tell you what, these chilies are going to be good to go. Oh, I love that swell, that, kind of, that that roasted sweetness. That reminds me of my grandma's house. So we got some uh, short ribs, and we're going to start to sear these off. So we'll obviously start by seasoning with a little bit of salt. And then we have two types of peppers here. One is a ancho and a little bit of uh, California chili. All right, so mix that really well together. Short ribs are a great choice for chili. It's a tougher cut of meat because it's a highly worked muscle, but that's what gives it flavor. Plus, tougher cuts are cheaper, so you get great flavor at low cost. It's a win-win. Oh, see, that's a perfect sear. Calvin, how does it feel to be back in the kitchen? You're not sitting around your ass anymore. <laughs> you seem better today. Yesterday, you seemed kind of, like, hesitant to do the kitchen stuff. Now, I can tell you want to be back here. Yeah, man, feel great. I can smell, like, the peppers. I can smell the smoke. So it's going to be, like, spicy, but not too spicy. You leave all the uh, bits on the base of the pan, right? And that becomes the foundation of your sauce, your dish, your braise, your chili, your stew, your soup. You deglaze it with either wine or beer. In this In case, case beer. we'll do some beer. Love it. These guys have over 20 beers on tap. Why not add it to the chili and give it that special touch? I'll reduce that down. We're adding a whole nother layer of flavor here. And then those chilies that you roasted off, we're going to steam them in the bag, and that's how you get the peel pulled off. And what's going to happen now is as they steam in there, that skin is going to blister, and it's going to fall right off the flesh. And then you're going to chop it up and add it right into the chili. Next, we're going to add three types of beans, white, kidney, and black beans for texture and color. Yeah, a little bit of tomatoes. Then we'll add the chilies and just let it simmer low and slow. This chili will actually get better the longer it develops. Not burnt and dry like those awful beef sliders. All right, guys, let's dig in here and try this chili. Go ahead. Oh, nice. That has a good flavor to it. So you like this? You love it? I love it, man. It's good. So being in the kitchen, it's therapeutic. I leave the anger and the aggression and all that somewhere else. Like, I'm home. All right, man, let's get this packed up. The City Hall offices in Downey have hundreds of visitors every day. And there's also a large veterans memorial right out front. This could be a great way for Nick and Calvin to spread the word and their story. And with Nick's GI Bill almost gone, it's now or never. All right, guys, this is your chance to talk to the community about your name, about your story. Basically, Calvin, I don't want to see what happened in Town Hall happen again. I mean, that's your general public right there. The general yeah. public. But yeah. that's, your, think that's your customer base. Guys, guys, guys. Listen. Oh, no, guys, 
I'm a bit nervous, you know? I don't know if I'm too happy about being here in City Hall. This trip here, it's a big deal. It's our chance to redeem ourselves. A lot of people from the city are gonna come by. It's, it's, it's just kind of scary to be able to freaking approach these people, and I just hope they like what we have to offer. You guys are here at City Hall with the name Bastards, which you don't want to change, no. so it's natural that maybe you're gonna have a confrontation. All right, guys, this is big. This is it, because this is your last chance to talk to the community about your name, about your story. Today's all about getting the message out there. It's our chance to redeem ourselves. It's, it's, it's just kind of scary to be able to freaking approach these people, and I just hope they like what we have to offer. You guys know about the name, right? Yes. A little bit. Yeah, what do you guys think about the name? I really do have concerns about eating at a place called Bastards. What are you so concerned about? Knowing that a lot of families, they raise kids, I would be afraid. I am concerned about that as well. I mean, people are bringing in their kids, and it's uncomfortable for the families. Maybe if you guys could take a step back and maybe talk to your little ones and let them know that, hey, guys, they're veterans, and, and these guys are some people that they're referred to as Bastards, but it's more than just a name. Check it out. This establishment was named in respect of those who have served in the finest infantry of the United States Marine Corps. I wish that it would have been like Magnificent Bastards or something, because I know now that it correlates with the story of your military background. At least a little bit better than Bastards. Yeah, ma'am. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Thank you so Thank you. much. Nice to meet you. Nice Pleasure. to meet you. You guys heard of the Magnificent Bastards? Yes, I have. I have. We got American Canteen Chow. That's that's what we're going for with this new concept. So let me know what you guys think about the chili. Okay. Sure. What do you think? Yeah. I think he's liking the chili. Yeah. There we go. We're on, we're on a good start here. There we go. Thank yeah. you guys for being of service, not only to the United States, but also to the city of Downey. Thank you. We'll come by on Saturday and check out the new spot. Thank you. Cool. Nick and Calvin are doing a great job connecting with the community. But we still need to find a way to connect with everyone who sees the bastard's name. Nick can't just run out the door to explain it to every passerby. And now that we've come up with an American canteen menu concept, it's time to address the over-the-top military decor. I was afraid that those who have PTSD might have a flashback and might go crazy in the joint. I got the feeling of dark and gloominess. So what was the thought process as you guys were decorating and putting all this together? Um, when people came in, they brought us flak jackets, helmets, and whatever they bring, we put it up. Oh, so people brought all this stuff? Yeah. Oh, everything is donated. And when we first started, it was literally just uh, the red walls that we painted and the flags that we have hanging up. Tell me about these photos on the wall here. 100% of the proceeds, if you buy one, uh, goes to the Marine Corps League. They're all about 80 bucks a piece. All goes back to a good cause. There's really important story pieces around this whole room. Yes. Because I think yes. some of it's getting lost in the sea of, of the things that are wrong. I think what we've got to do is we've got to change the color tone. It can make for a more inviting environment. In addition to the fact that we need to declutter some of the military aspect of the room right now and put it in the right position. I think that the camo netting is closing the room in a little bit, so I think we can kind of reconfigure some of that. So how do you guys feel about taking all this stuff down and basically having a new beginning? Uh, a bit nervous, to tell you the truth. Skeptical? We've always appreciated, like, the military theme. You know, we don't want to go away from it too much, you know? And I agree. We don't want to get away from it. I think we need to just reposition it. It's honestly scary to see everything off the walls. I don't know what the hell these guys have in store for us, and I'm, I'm kind of scared now. Let's get some paint going. If these renovations don't work, and our everyday customers, our veterans that walk in and don't feel the same homey feeling that they did before, I'm thinking it might ruin our business. Good. This is a really good start, guys. While we start the renovation, Calvin decides to head back to the kitchen to create a signature dish for the grand reopening. It feels like it's been calling out for me, so I'm gonna go back and work on some new dishes. And I'm thinking, let's stick to military. One of the famous dishes in the military is an SOS, which is a on a shingle. Basically, it's a piece of toast topped with a cream sauce with meat inside the sauce. So I'm taking this famous military dish, and I'm gonna modernize it and make it for everyone. All right, so like the military uses just cheap sausage. We're gonna go with the pork loin instead. I'm gonna put the subtle rub on the pork, honey and garlic, and a little bit of paprika to add some smokiness to it. SOS, it's basically just cream and meat, but we're gonna also top it with diced bacon that's gonna go into the cream sauce and it's gonna top the sandwich. Pork on top of pork. Just a little bit of beer. Let that reduce down. All right, now let's add the cream and the stock. Hey, what's up, gents? How's it going? I'm making a, a, our own little version of a on the shingle. You and those names. <laughs> you don't want to, it's like, hey, man, you know, we got to stir up the pot somehow. I mean, we'll call it an SOS sandwich. These are what all my Vietnam brothers and Korean brothers ate while in the 
You know what, man? I'm just gonna jump in here. This looks so good. Awesome. That's great. I mean, that dish goes way beyond anything I've tried on day one here. Nice. Big time. This is a signature dish, packed with flavor, man. Pork is tender and juicy. It's got a perfect amount of spice to it. I love it, man. This is buzzworthy. My question to you, are you willing to be in the front of the house? Because this man belongs in the kitchen. Oh, yeah, 100%. If he's going to be cooking up things like this, I have no problem working in front of the house. It's a relief to know that, like, the weight of the front of the house is just gone. And I'm sure he feels the same way with the weight of the back of the house is gone. Way to bring back the passion. We got a crew coming in to help us with the ambiance, so you guys got to get out of here. We want to retain the military aspect of Bastard's decor without having it feel like a fortified bunker. So we're going to create that welcoming World War II American canteen-style atmosphere. We're putting a modern spin on their old camo with a bold new graphic for the walls. The bazookas were randomly hung around the restaurant, and the reviewers were scared by them. But by making a bazooka wall and displaying them as an art piece, it's going to look awesome. After you. We're replacing all the mismatched chairs at the bar with brand new stools with an industrial feel. We're adding a couch to create a lounge area for people to sit. We're taking all their mementos and showcasing them on shelves and in frames. Coming together. Remembering their fallen brothers is important, so we designed a special case to display their names. Perhaps, most importantly, we're adding a plaque to the entrance of the restaurant with the meaning of the name Bastards, so that people know before they walk in what the name means and why they need to support it. This place oh looks my awesome. God. This place looks awesome. How we doing, man? Welcome. Good, man. Hey, what's up, gents? How we Morning. doing? I'm scared. What is this place going to look like? I got to show you. This is it. This is our last chance. How we doing, man? Welcome. Good, man. Hey, what's up, Jax? How, How we doing? doing? Look at Morning. you guys. You guys look, look clean. Awesome. You, you look fresh. So Unbelievable. You. you have no hat on. I'm shocked. You guys have you guys have these uniforms on. You look so professional. But I got to show you. What's up? Oh, wow, look at the sun. That is so nice. Wow. Look at that. Now you guys impress me. <laughs> now you guys impress me. Right? That is oh, yeah. Cool. The best part about the flag is that it reads our freaking mission statement, and that's the Magnificent Bastards. And the fact that they understood what this restaurant's all about, that really touched my heart. That's freaking good to go, man. Now when we have, you know, all these kids walking by, all these parents, you know, wondering exactly what they're going to tell their children, all they got to say is, hey, look up there and read that real quick. How important is this for you tonight? You know what? It's our, it's our chance to redeem ourselves. You know, after that town hall meeting, I don't think we, we exited in the right note, you know, so. And I'm actually excited. I can't wait till, you know, how things go. I hope they're pleased. OK, <laughs> let's go check it out. Holy so What? Hey, oh, my God. So pretty. We what the hell couch. happened here? We have a couch. Ooh. I have a new bed. <laughs> I have a new bed. <laughs> <laughs> I can leave no my dad's way. couch now. I think I'm gonna be using this a lot here, dude. I'm good to go. <laughs> we got matching chairs now, guys. Oh, All they spin, how cool. Before there were a lot of mismatched chairs and they didn't pull together. Yeah. Now we got all the chairs that match and then threw the couch in there because that's kind of that mature, much more masculine feel that matches American Canteen. Is this wallpaper? It looks good. It's kind of like camouflage, but modern day camouflage, maybe? Yeah. yeah, the camo was covering everything up. It was draping it out, and it kind of brought the mood down a little bit. So now we've incorporated the camo into a more modern geometric feel into the wall covering, and then opened up the windows a little bit. We got some of these select blinds here, which you can kind of manipulate the light. Speaking of the lighting, we used your lights, right? But we dropped them down a little bit and replaced the bulbs with Edison bulbs. It gives a little bit more kind of a rustic industrial feel. We were able to reuse your tables because they were in such good shape, and it still matches the feel with the beams. Yeah, the beams bring it together. Outstanding work, guys. Before, the bazookas were right in the entry area. Now we've incorporated it into a bazooka wall, which, come on, what restaurant has a bazooka wall? Now for, like, the shadow box. I love, like, all the patches in there. Can we add more patches? Yeah. Because all those patches were given to us. Everything that's in its place is nothing more than a template for you to continue adding pieces. You now have a two-touch POS. OK. Now you can actually integrate all the stuff that you got on the menus and actually figure out what your cogs are, your cost of goods. Yo, Nick. Oh, dude. Yeah, man. I like that. I like that a lot. 
Before, the plaques were falling off the bar, and now we've showcased it, and, you know, I think that it obviously brings out the story a little bit better. That's why it's called Bastards, man. The menu needed a major overhaul, so we transformed what was bland bar food into unique canteen-style dishes. Whoa, what the hell is all this stuff here? No, I love the way you placed everything. I mean, this is really nice. Presentation. Right. Took what the online reviewers had to say, took it to heart, and this is pretty much my reaction to them. So I figured since this is, you know, a beer primary place, I figured we sign out with the beer battered onion rings. Use like a light lager, like mix it with some malt vinegar. Decide instead of having like the regular ranch, make like a nice little herbal ranch. So herbal we got ranch. That. Yeah. Exactly. So we have house made ranch. Great, now. Yeah, house made ranch. Even yeah. though, you know, great. Outstanding. Great. All right, and then we got the homecoming sloppy Joe, braised turkey with pan gravy, cranberry jalapeno relish, and a red potato salad. This is really good. We also got Italian beer chili, boneless short rib, pasilla and Anaheim chilies, stout beer, tri-colored beans, and aged cheddar. That's American canteen style. That's it American is. canteen, man. Yeah. 100%. Oh, that's good. Before, we had that greasy chicken sandwich. Now we have the Patriot pot roast sandwich with roasted carrots, celery, and apple fennel slaw. Before, you had the locked and loaded nachos, which to me seemed as if it was everything from the kitchen sink. Thrown on top of nachos, the cheese weren't melted. Now you've got the locked and loaded American hot dog, which you've done right. You wrapped it in bacon, and you've done some homemade from scratch ingredients on there. And that's a hot dog that people are going to have to drive to come and get. The mustard on it is perfect. The famous SOS. This has some real culinary inspiration. You've got pork tenderloin, roasted bell peppers, topped with a little bit of bacon, herb cream gravy, all on Texas toast. That's a brilliant dish right there, and one that I would come back for. I'm drooling even looking at it. Oh. <laughs> I know, right? Oh my god. We came up with this red, white, and blue shortbread dessert with strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, and whipped cream. Awesome. Well done. Calvin's in the kitchen, and he's obviously taken all of his brilliance making it happen. You're going to be working up front. you got an amazing staff. You guys look great. And now it's about doing it, you guys, tonight. Looks like everyone is on board tonight. And here's hoping that Calvin can handle this kitchen. He hasn't run for two years. All right, guys, to your battle stations. I got a million things going on through my head right now. Nervous. I hope my staff's ready. I hope Calvin's ready. If we do not please the online reviewers tonight, I don't know what's going to happen. This week has been a battle, but Calvin and Nick are ready to show the online reviewers a better attitude and an upgraded menu at Bastards. If they can't keep it together, they chance losing their restaurants for good. Look at the furniture! Oh my gosh! Wow, this is amazing! Man, you really tied this place together. Right. This yeah. is impressive. It is. I it am is. shocked. Welcome to Bastards. How are you doing? The customers start walking through the door, and it's like a gut check. You know, I'm like looking around, and I was like, all right, am I prepped for everything? Is everything perfect? Work on the onion rings, work on the sandwich, and then carry out the plating here, okay? When you first came in here, did you think that this was like a marine theme? I felt like it was a bunker. Now it feels like an open space. It has a lot more life to it now. There wow. you go. Two pot roll sandwiches and a beer chili. <laughs> this is it. This is our last chance. All right, hey, so I got two pot roll sandwiches coming, right? Perfect. And then you're also working on uh, two turkey joes? OK, because that one's for 10. All right, I'll make them one right now. Calvin. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Well, not too shabby, actually. A couple things. Shoot. Look, man down over here. Oh, f All this stuff over here, it's all messed up. Let's get that out of the trash, yeah? Yeah. The kitchen is a chef's sanctuary, and it must be respected at all times. Everything must be clean and in its place. Nobody wants food coming out of a dirty kitchen. So the floor needs to be clean, the dish pan needs to be clean. Because unfortunately, what you got over here is you got customers that can see all that all right, guys, so we're just going to clean up this place real fast. We're going to clean up the floors and wipe everything down, switch out all the pots, and then let's add some water to this. Calvin has really stepped it up this week. He's a natural leader, and it's showing in the kitchen. The SOS and the pot roast sandwich. Holy and that's a Navy dish? It's like a fancy Navy dish is what this is. This is an Admiral Navy dish you're, right you're, here. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Good. 
Nick's walking through the dining room. He's owning a room. He's doing what he does best. I know I met you guys at City Hall, but hey, what do you guys think about this chow? I know we sold you guys at City Hall, right? Yeah, you like that chili then, right? Good stuff? Hey, well, the chef's right there. You can go ahead and thank him yourself. I got to give Calvin some credit. I actually gave him a little pointers. He jumped on those pointers. Pulled it together. Pulled it together. That is a piece of beauty right there. Mmm. I had a pot roast sandwich, and that meat was just melting in my mouth. It was just incredible. No, I think we're taking it to the next level, guys. Yeah, like for sure. It's gonna be hard to stop us now. The food tasted like somebody actually cared. Try fried. Let's see if it's not salty. Better? Yeah, much better. It was like one big salt stick. Wow. Nice and hot. Less, less salt this time. Looks like most of the reviewers really like the changes that were made. True, but I'm most curious about Linda. She really had a tough go in that town hall. Turn this place into a bar and forget the it's restaurant. It's not about a bar. It's I'm not about telling a bar. you. Like, I'm my niece a comes here. Club. Make it my a niece club. comes here. OK. So I'm sending Nick over to her table. It's his responsibility to smooth things over and find out if he's changed enough to get a better review. What do you think, Linda? I can't wait to hear what you got to say. I mean, I love the what, what you did with the place. It looks great. But I was hoping that you changed the name. I'm kind of okay. disappointed you didn't. There's a reason why I didn't change the name. You see that flag over those plaques over there? Yeah. All those Marines there have died in honor of that name. They I made the ultimate that. sacrifice. I didn't know that. I gave the restaurant tonight three forks. But if they change the name of the restaurant, the way I feel they should, I give them four for it. I honestly want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming back and giving us a second chance. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. It makes me really happy knowing that even our biggest critics can walk out today and say, hey, you know what? I'm a lot happier right. than the first okay. time I walked thank in here. You. So, mission accomplished. What's up, gentlemen? How we doing? <laughs> How do you feel? I feel great. It's, it's like I just walked off a therapy session. I'm stoked about this. I really am. Did you guys feel like you needed to show the crowd tonight that you weren't just a couple hotheads? No, I don't think we needed to show the crowd. I think we did show the crowd. I think that Andrew and Anthony honestly taught myself and Calvin a good lesson. They made me actually open up my mind and start looking into all my reviewers and what they had to say. That's huge. Well, it's a huge change, you know? You got to leave from the front, right? As soon as they walk in, you let them know that, hey, we're here to freaking serve you guys. Calvin's back there again, 100%. You have That's to what lead. it's all about, you guys. You have to lead from the front. Lead Absolutely. from the front. Thank you guys you, crushed it, all right? We're proud of you, man. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And group hug, group, group hug. Group hug. Group Give it up. Oh, Hey, Andrew. Hey, Anthony. What's up? What's going on? Business is booming. Everyone's loving the new concept. Everyone's loving the new chow. We went from uh, two forks to four and a half forks. Honestly, I think that half a fork has to do with our name, but you know, I'm OK with that. Putting the plaque up was amazing. Now people walk by, they read our mission statement, and they understand that it's more than just a restaurant. Anthony, Andrew, thanks for everything, guys. Next time you guys have a want to drink and you're in the area, come on down. It's on me.